there, Tanya from moneygal.ca. Welcome to my third video on using Excel for your household budgeting. In the first vi video, we built this template for managing your household budget in Excel. And in the second video, we populated it and balanced our budget. In this video, I'm going to show you how I also use Excel to manage my cash flow, all the money coming in and out of my account on a daily basis. And I have the two tables linked, so if I make changes on my budget, the changes automatically happen over here. It's a pretty complicated table, but I'll show you as I go why I really like doing it this way. It lets me keep a handle on a number of different things at once. I find it very effective. If you like this and you decide after watching this video that you also want to manage your money this way, then in the fourth video, I'll show you step by step how exactly to build this table for yourself. All right, so let me start by just showing you how I use this table on a daily basis. I basically take about 30 seconds a day, and as money is going in or out of my account, um, I, I put it in here every day. And like I said, it takes less than a minute a day, but it really helps me keep a handle on my budget. Each pay period has two columns. The first column shows you the amount that you have to spend in each category for the pay period. And in the second column is where I enter the money I actually spend in each pay period. Okay, and that's as simple as clicking on the field. So let's say I just went to the grocery store, I just spent money on food, equals $150, enter. All right, then if I go back to the grocery store tomorrow, I choose the cell again, I click up here in the formula, and I can just add the new money I spent. So plus another $34, enter. All right, so that's how you use and add on to um, the cells. This top cell here, A1, this is where I enter all the money that's going to come into my account through the entire year. So when I get that first paycheck equals, let's say, 1643.50, enter. Okay, you can see that that much money has come into my account. And this yellow amount lets me keep track of what's actually in my account. So basically what's there now is the money that's come in on this one paycheck minus the $184 that I'm showing that I spent on groceries so far. All right. Um, the reason I like doing it this way is I can keep an eye on several things at once, like I mentioned. So the first thing I'm watching is how much I have in each pay period in each category. Okay. When I go in the negative, okay, let's say I spend more than my budget, I'm putting a formula in where the cell goes red. So it really jumps out at me. I can tell right away when I've gone over budget for the week, okay? I have the same thing going on in here and the same thing going on in this cell here, by the way. If it goes below zero, and I'll show you how to do that in the fourth video, if it goes below zero, it turns red. I really like that visual effect. I really like that jumping out at me. The second thing I can keep track of keeping my money this way is the amount that I have for the entire year in a budgeted amount. The reason that's important to keep an eye on as well, not just how much you have it broken down by pay period, is because sometimes a bill comes in before the money's accumulated in that um, category and you don't have a choice. When that bill comes in, you do have to pay it, but that cell here, this amount, just lets you see that you're still within budget for that amount. So for instance, if my car insurance bill came in of $800, I don't really have a choice. I have to pay my bill. I obviously didn't have time yet to accumulate that $800 for that category, but I can see here that I didn't go over budget for the whole year. I can see that I'm still within what I budgeted for car insurance for the year. Up here, the third thing and the most important thing, which is why I color this cell yellow, is I like to see the amount in my actual bank account and make sure that I'm not going into my overdraft. That would be the most important thing. So basically, what happens when you're tracking these three things, the how much you have per pay period in a, in a category, how much you have for the year in a category, and finally, how much is actually in your bank account, um, what happens is you can make informed decisions when the bill comes in. So again, going back to this car insurance bill, so the bill came in for $800, I can see obviously I don't have that accumulated. I'm not going to wait. I can't wait the however many months to make sure that I have that money in that category. But I can maybe call my insurance company and make arrangements to pay it in two parts. Or I can see that actually I have lots of money in my bank account, that this is a fine time to pay that $800. Or, um, you know, today's January 14. I know that on January 16, another paycheck's coming in. So I could just wait two days and pay it when the paycheck comes in. All right. 
So that's basically how this works. Now how it relates back to the budget is really important as well. So let's imagine now that, uh, let's fast forward through the year. So I'm going to go down here. When you scroll over, you can see that the, that the pay periods kind of kind of get hidden. But if you want to see those, all you have to do is click back on this arrow down here to bring you back in time. As the weeks go by, when I hit a new payday, I scroll over like this and then start entering the new amount in the new week. But let's imagine now that it's the end of the year, we hit December, we've been spending money all this time, and uh, unfortunately what happens is the oil bill comes in to heat my house, and I budgeted $3,000 for the year, but the price of oil went up this year. Okay, let's imagine that I hit December and all of a sudden, I've spent over budget and I can see that clearly right here. I can see that I just went $200 over in this budget. Um, it's really important when that happens to go back to your budget and to adjust it. Okay. So something like heat, this isn't just, uh, you know, you went to the restaurant too often or whatever. There's nothing you can do about that. The price of oil went up, the amount you budgeted, you know, matched what you paid last year, but obviously the price went up. So this year you needed to budget more. So, you're basically going to change your budgeted amount, okay, to make sure that it matches what you've spent. If I go back here, you'll see that now, if I go to heat, I'm within budget again, okay? But I've thrown my entire budget off, which means I now have to go back, I have to maybe spend a bit less per person on clothing, okay? And, okay, yay, I just rebalanced my budget, and when I go back here, I can see that, yeah, I still do have money left in that budget. Everything's fine. So the two tables work together, and I find that it's a really effective way I can make really um, educated decisions when it comes time to we've been invited to something. Can we afford to go? Or, you know, it, uh, somebody needs a new winter coat. Is this a good week to buy that coat or whatever? Um, hopefully this was helpful. Like I said, if you want to do this, uh, watch the fourth video, and I'll show you exactly how to build this table. Thanks for watching.